Hey guys, what's up? Force here from Force Strategy Gaming and welcome back. Today we're going to be taking a look at a Zerg strategy. In this replay, our Zerg player here is D-Killer and our Zerg opponent is MTW's Demaga. So this is a mirror matchup Zerg versus Zerg strategy. Let's go right into Killer Vision here. Before we get too far into the strategy itself though and talking about what we're going to be going over today, I just want to make a little administrative note. Uh, tomorrow, Saturday, December 4th, 2010, I'm going to be at the Boomkin Gaming Center in Haverhill, Mass. This is for a local LAN tournament. I am from the New England area, and this is a New England-based tournament, so I will be attending. Uh, the address, again, that was the Boomkin Gaming Center. The address is 371 River Street in Haverhill, Mass. So if you guys are interested in playing, or if you guys are interested in just going to hang out, talk about some StarCraft, and just have a fun day, then uh, feel free to stop by. I'm also going to repost that address uh, right in the video description below. Enough with that, though. Uh, if, basically, yeah, if you're interested, stop by, but let's get on to the strategy. Uh, we're going to be looking at a Zerg vs. Zerg mirror matchup strategy. So, important things to note. What are we seeing in Zerg vs. Zerg nearly almost every game? Uh, well, in the matchup, we're looking at either Speedling, Baneling, or Roach opening. And what we're going to be going over today is how effective a Roach opening can be against an opponent who's going for heavy Speedlings and has a Baneling nest as well. Uh, now, an issue is that, you know, they're going to outmass you as far as literal literal army size. The, the actual numbers of their forces, they will have more than you. If you're investing resources into going for roaches, then they can invest those resources um, in speedlings instead, and they're going to have literally a larger number. Now, what does this mean to you? This means that they can easily get a surround on you unless you do a good job of positioning your units. So something we're going to be looking at is kind of how to properly position your units when you're engaging an opponent who's going for a, um, a larger size army than you because again what you want to avoid is that surround. You don't want him to get all of his zerglings around your few amount of zerglings and your roaches um, because that's when you can actually lose that fight. But if you can sort of form a wall, form some sort of a straight line, uh, then you're going to be pretty safe against that. So that's what we're going to be taking a look at today. As far as the actual build order, we are seeing a fast expansion. Our opponent did the very same thing here, so let's look at the timing for everything here. We started off with that hatchery at 15 supply. 16 supplies when we went ahead and dropped this extractor down, and then again at 16 supply getting this spawning pool. Now, the whole idea, I've said this plenty of times in the past, but the whole idea is getting that extractor first allows you to saturate it right away, and it allows you to have enough Vespian so that as soon as this pops up, you can get that metabolic boost. Uh, something important to note about metabolic boost, uh, you'll notice this when you watch professional players play. Uh, pretty much every single game they get it. It's because it's so effective now They don't necessarily always get it right away like we're gonna be getting here You're gonna see that go down right now right after those right after we get those next hundred resources You're gonna be seeing that go down um, But they do get it at some point. It's because having those speed links is such an effective tool um, It's so they're so much more effective than those regular zerglings without speed And you really want that because if you don't get that it cuts back on a lot of your scouting ability It, cut ba it cuts back on your ability to be um Ac run across the map basically very quickly you know your, your ability to respond to what your opponent's doing whether it's a counterattack or defending your base it just it really hinders you if you don't get that so make that an important part of whatever strategy you go for eventually getting that metabolic boost even if you don't intend on going zergling heavy having that option is really important uh, so the actual timings there, um, we also saw these queens when that second hatchery came up we saw a queen at 18 and a 20 uh, moving into his base now with our couple zerglings that we made right when that first spawning pool came up and we want to check for his secondary building so we saw that spawning pool there's that banelings nest so now we're assured that this is actually going to be really good for us we're coming down with this roach warren as well um, but let me go over that timing after this extractor and spawning pool so we saw, we saw extractor spawning pool both at 16 supply 18 supply was his first queen 20 supply was the second queen 23 we saw the metabolic boost and this roach warren came down at 26 supply so we're seeing our opponent move out here uh, something else great to know is that overlord scouting very effective as Zerg in a Zerg versus Zerg matchup, you don't really have to worry about uh, air units or anti air units anytime soon. The only really early game anti air unit is the Queen, so if you just be along the path that he's going to be moving with your overlords, you're going to see any push coming. So we have these roaches. Now, the important thing, like I said, was to we want to kind of create a wall. You can see he's got quite a large amount of speedlings right here, and we aren't quite near that actual, the literal amount of units. We have a smaller number of units than he does. 
So what we want to do is we want to form some sort of a wall. You can see this wall being formed here between the hatchery and our units. Also having like three or four roaches right here is going to be a really good idea. It's going to prevent him from running straight into your base. Um, but we don't want to engage where he can get our surround. You see we pushed out there but we pulled back because he would have just engaged and got us around. And here we go. You can see the wall with those speedlings bringing up our drones as well to prevent these zerglings from running through and getting us around. And then also surrounding our queen with these roaches. All of these measures are going to help you be much more effective against his speedlings. Using your roaches to surround your queen to protect it, allowing your queen to do damage, preventing him from killing it. Using your speedlings on one side and drones on the other side. And you may say, well, what if he didn't attack in that particular position? Again, what I said is if you put some roaches right here, it's going to prevent him from running into your base as well. That's another option that you do have. Had he run in at that time, what we would have wanted to do is pull our drones down so that they were safe and allowed our units to get up and attack him. Um, but you can see just how effective roaches are against speedlings early game. Just look at all the damage they do. Um, this is actually a very dangerous spot, but look at this, using the statue to prevent a full surround. You can see those roaches are specifically um, held and hugged tight to the statue, and it's stopping those zerglings from getting this around. That's exactly what I'm talking about. You need to look for these kinds of things. For example, if you tried to engage here, we maybe want to pull our roaches over here to prevent that surround. Um, whatever is necessary, just try to form some sort of a wall. And remember, you can, there's so much in this terrain. You can use these walls. You can use things like these statues. You can use ramps. You can use buildings. Whatever it takes to prevent a surround is what you're going to want to try to do. Um, now, he's trying to come up with roaches to counteract ours, but unfortunately at this point, since we uh, hindered him so much by taking out so many of his zerglings early on, uh, he's just at a disadvantage as far as army size. Again, as long as you can prevent the surround, uh, these roaches will do very, very well against speedlings. Now, you may ask, our opponent had a banelings nest. Why didn't he get the banelings? Well, the reason he didn't was because he saw this mass of roaches, and he realized at that point that, you know, banelings do nothing against a mass, mass of roaches. He could go for the attempt at getting a, a bunch of drone kills, but, you know, if you play wisely against, um, if you play with roaches and you play wisely, against speedling baneling it's pretty easy to micro your drones away from the banelings the banelings are fairly slow until they get that speed upgrade and he's not going to have that speed upgrade anytime soon in the early game because we know that he uh, needs a layer to do that so let's just get right into the uh, build order one last time we saw that 15 hatchery that 16 extractor and then that 16 spawning pool 18 supply we saw this first queen 20 supply second queen you definitely want these two queens especially if you're going for this fast expansion obviously the um, spew larva is going to be very helpful for you that's obviously something you want to do but also it's going to help you with that early game defense because we are vulnerable going for a quick expansion uh, in this particular game our opponent did the same thing but if he didn't and he, if he was playing on one base you would definitely need that second queen it would be absolutely vital to early game defense 23 is when we saw that metabolic boost like I mentioned earlier this is something you really want to incorporate into pretty much every zerg strategy you do just having the speedlings such an effective scouting tool it's it's so effective at being able to respond to what your opponent's doing like I said if you want to do a counterattack or if you need to run back to your base to defend uh, just having that mobility having that extra speed is very important and you should be trying to get that every single game and then 26 supplies when we get that roach warren we scouted out that bailings nest we knew at that point we are vulnerable again to surrounds so do what you can to form walls wherever you're fighting do what you can to prevent surrounds um, there's so much in the terrain again ramps walls statues other units you know we saw this wall being formed here because of zerglings and drones just whatever it takes form that wall once you basically push back that initial surge of units you're going to be on an advantage because uh, those roaches do so well it's really going to help push back on the numbers that your opponent has and then a counterattack can be devastating as we saw here so yeah, very effective strategy in Zerg vs. Zerg. I know uh, the ZVZ matchup can be a very fragile one, so I just wanted to go over that for you guys and show you guys the effectiveness of Roaches. And once again, like I mentioned earlier in the video, I am going to be at the Boomkin Gaming Center uh, tomorrow, Saturday, December 4th, 2010. And this is at 371 River Street in Haverhill, Mass. So if you guys feel like attending, then go ahead and stop by. This has been Force from Force Strategy Gaming. If you guys like our videos and you like what we're doing here, then please do go ahead and subscribe to our channel. And as always, guys, keep watching and keep owning. So we're going to be moving into the uh, enemy player's base here with these speedlings. Now, something I do want to note, too, it's probably going to be a really good idea to maybe even just hit the Zerg player. Now, if I bring up the Everyone button here, you're going to see, look how defenseless he is. Absolutely nothing. Now, a lot of times you're going to be seeing um, Protoss or Terran players wall off.